So how to post high quality videos online. Yeah, this is more of an informative video. I think I kind of just want a digital reminder of how to post high quality videos online. I'm trying recently to really um, up my production, keep things very consistent. And if you find this video useful, save this to your watch later so you can actually come back to refer to this. You know, we're gonna talk about everything from export settings to aspect ratio to codex. So what do I do as soon as I open up DaVinci Resolve? Click new project, I'm gonna call this how to upload high quality videos online. Cool. So as soon as I open up DaVinci Resolve, the first thing I go to is the settings and I change the timeline resolution to 4K. I don't know why, but it just it's just automatically in 1080p. I think there's a way for me to change the preset, but I haven't found it yet. The next thing I do is um, I also look at the frame rate. It's 24 frames per second. Um, this seems all good. Um, sometimes I do change the timeline resolution and change the aspect ratio. So yeah, there's a lot of different sort of aspect ratios and they're each for different purposes. Like a really wide aspect ratio is made for these, you know, really cinematic, wide films. When I say this, I mean, you know, there's landscapes, there's things to look at. Um, sort of the more square, the more portrait, they're either for phones or for videos where there's a lot of portrait shots, where there's a lot of people involved. If you don't really have any big sort of landscapes, I'll just go for the standard 16 by 9 or actually chop it down to 4 by 3 especially if there's a lot of people involved. So 3 by 2 is for 35mm film, DSLR cameras and smartphones. 4x3, that's for video computer displays. 5x4, I don't really use that, that's computer displays. 16x10, that's widescreen computers, that's not really used. Um, but the one that's the, probably the most popular, the most used is the 16x9, that's HDTV, widescreen TV, smartphones, it's just horizontal smartphones. And then 2.35 by 1 is a cinema scope. And then 9 by 16 is the smartphone vertical um, sort of format, the full, sort of full screen for vertical. So that's for Instagram, Instagram, that's for IG Reels, that's for TikTok, really big. Um, and then 1 by 1 is just a standard square for Instagram, the old school Instagram posts. If you want to take up the most screen on Instagram, use like a 4 by 5. The next thing I do when I enter into DaVinci, I go straight into the color management panel and then into the color space and transforms sort of box. And these are the two most important things here, timeline color space and output color space. Bro, for six years that I've been using DaVinci, I've been editing on a Mac, I never changed this, I never changed this once. And whenever I'd export, my videos would always look kind of gray. Like I'll be like, wait, why is my video kind of gray? Especially when I got a new laptop, I was thinking, okay, maybe just the screen's just high quality. Um, then I realized, no, it's to do with the color science um, and to do with, you know, it's not, you know, outputting the correct sort of data, you know, that you're seeing here. So you actually need to change that if you're a Mac. So what I do is I change these both to Rec 709A and Rec 709A. You can do this in the export tab, but sometimes if you don't do it first here, you might forget. And then, you know, subconsciously, you know, you upload just a gray looking video, especially if you're in a rush, you upload like a just gray looking video which you know no one wants to do it doesn't matter about your colors being vibrant your colors being saturated it matters about your colors you know being what you want them to be i don't really change anything here as soon as i drag video in the first thing i do is actually create tracks and i create stereo tracks this is very very important stereo is basically audio that's hitting both sides right if it's just a mono track it's just it basically just has data in one track i'll show you proof um you can see this is a stereo track it has a left track and it has a right track mono tracks they only have one track you don't want that to happen because sometimes you know if you're just you know if you're listening in two earphones it'll just be going off in one ear a story of where i got this wrong is you know when i was making that tech of a video at the start it's just playing out one ear and then it suddenly goes into both ears um, and you know, everyone, you know, kind of told me, yo, like, that's really, really cool. That's really creative how you thought of sort of um, changing the dynamic of the audio, of the ears, you know, you know, that really gave us like a good experience. The truth is, I didn't check that it wasn't in stereo. Um, I just recorded, I had a problem with my microphone and, you know, it was only recording our one audio channel. I know that that wasn't meant, that wasn't 
what the outcome was meant to be and it could have been a much better video that way and that's happened a bunch of times so whenever you add audio tracks always make sure they're stereo so yeah i'm gonna add a couple more and then i actually do name them so now i always change these so usually if it's a youtube video i'll be like the first track is a voiceover then these ones i'll put sound effects one and i'll put sound effects two and then for this one i'll put music i normally change this color to be like purple and i change these two to be green and then i change the first one to be orange i don't normally change the color of the video clips i find that too confusing um but especially with audio when you're trying to you know sync things up see you know where the music is you know it's just a lot more useful so i keep this as a baseline for very simple videos but usually then i'll add like a music two layer a music three layer i'll add like four more layers of sound effects i'll add like an environment sound like a background noise voiceover especially if i want them to like bleed into each other i'll add like two three voiceover tracks um but yeah this is just a standard of what i use um for videos so yeah that's kind of just how i organize my timeline off the rip i'm still figuring this out the audio levels this panel to the right i think bus one is just kind of like a summary of all your audio try and make sure it's not hitting above yellow it's cool if it goes into yellow i try and if it hits red then i think that's a problem it means it's too loud so i just go into the the different channels here sometimes i, I solo them or i mute other tracks i've usually just found it easier to just solo things and then I try and, you know, gauge things that way. Either, you know, decrease the volume or increase the volume. That's just a basic way of how I set up my timeline. Say if I'm making a video version for TikTok, which I'm actually trying to do now more recently, um, I'll just go into timelines. I'll create, create new timeline here. I'll click TikTok version. You can either use the project settings here or you can actually click off it and then you can actually change the format. So here, say this was TikTok, I'll click vertical resolution um, and then I'll click create and then here we go we've got tiktok version here and then say if i drag a video down here it'll be full size scaled for tiktok right um and then the thing is if you want to go back to your other video your other timeline don't panic you know even though you don't see anything you can just click here and then you can uh, go back to timeline one and there it is there's your normal video or you can just double click on here and it'll take you to the different timeline so if i'm uploading a video for youtube nowadays it's always 4k so here i'll go on custom export i'll go quick time now someone told me it's better to do h.65 if it's 4k i don't know if that's i don't know why but um i've just been doing i've just been using this codec codecs are just different ways to package a video so some codecs have say they carry a lot more information than other codecs so like uh, like an apple prores that has a lot of information and the file sizes are really really big um yeah your video will be really really crisp but it will take ages to upload to social media. It'll take ages to upload anywhere. So like ProRes, I usually use that if I want to transfer videos from one program to another. That's what I use ProRes for. And then when it goes to quality, I click restrict. And then I change to 100,000. Um, I think that's kilobytes per second. So it's, this is all data. This is all to do with data and information. Um, so yeah, I don't touch the encoding profile. Keyframes, I don't touch. See, we already changed this earlier, the color space tag and the gamma tag, so we don't actually need to touch this. Audio, I don't touch. So yeah, then I don't touch my, uh, render speed. I've always kind of liked that, you know, DaVinci kind of renders really quick. And I've honestly only had a problem once. In the past eight years of using DaVinci Resolve, I've only had a problem once. And that was last year to, with a bug. Um, so yeah, don't, I don't touch the render speed. I really like that it renders really quick. Um, I used to always, you know, use these kind of presets they have up here. I guess these are kind of useful if you get into it. But um, yeah, I've never really touched these apart from export an XML file. It's basically a file containing the data of where all the cuts are. So you just export a ProRes file um, to another program, say like Premiere Pro if I want to do a bunch of effects. You export basically the ProRes file. And then the XML file is basically just a bunch of data that shows, okay, it's cut here, it's cut here, it's cut here. It's just useful, you know, if you color grade in one program or you edit in another. I just do everything in DaVinci for the most part. Now what I've been doing recently is sort of introducing quality control. So yeah, after the video is finished rendering, I'll run it through a bunch of quality control checks to make sure the video is like consistent and up to par. Um, that's what I've been doing recently. 
um, and that's what I want to encourage you guys to do as well. Um, just to make sure all your videos are at the same level, um, so that, you know you're not you know you're not second guessing yourself. You know. But yeah. Before we you know get into it, if you like the video, drop a sub. Um, join the DHM. I'm really liking these videos. Um, this is just a video of me talking. I thought it'd be useful for me to actually run through how I try and post you know decent videos online. Um, so yeah, if you are liking the vid. Do let me know down below, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, let's get let's get straight into the check. So, they come under five headings. So, first off is pre-production, video, audio, then general, and then post-production. The pre-production, this is actually before the video is made. Um, so I asked myself, have I got a shot list? Have I got visual references? Do I know in my head of what the video is going to look like? Do I have a time frame? Do I know how long it's going to take me to shoot the video? If it's a YouTube video, sometimes my videos I shoot them literally throughout the whole week and I only get finished on the last day um, so yeah it differs a lot from personal videos to sort of client work but yeah I do actually try and you know actually keep myself in check with pre-production then with the video is your color grade actually consistent and clear so where I've messed up sometimes is when I've been in a rush I haven't even double checked if the white balance is the same in two clips so it'll look like two completely different things purely because I forgot to check, double check that you know the color grade was constant and clean. Um, so yeah, I also check is the video sharp and then 4K. And you know we kind of do the whole thing at the beginning to make sure of this. Um, are there weird artifacts in the walls, in the shadows, um, on the roof, in the ground? Are there weird artifacts because you know the ISO you were shooting at? Is there grain? Just things like this that makes the video look a lot less appealing. Then the, the next thing is how's the skin tone? Do the skin tones look natural? Do the skin tones look like not exaggerated? Do they look believable? Uh, next, the audio. Have you added sound effects where needed? Is the music too loud? So are you speaking and you know we can barely hear what you're saying because you know you've pumped up the music? I kind of like dampening the audio instead of just you know lowering the audio. I feel like it just gives it a, a much more smooth sort of vibe. Can you hear every piece of dialogue? So the people that are talking, if it's you, if it's someone else, if it's narration, can you hear every single piece they're saying? Um, you know, have you added EQ? Have you added noise reduction in certain parts? Have you faded them out? Have you added reverb? Have you added echoes, you know? Have you added background effects to make it seem a lot more realistic? Then we go into the general. Have you added text when needed and does it interact with the scene? What I've been doing recently is trying to add text that actually interacts with the scene a bit. So if that's, you know, being behind a mask and being revealed. I think I did this recently in, in, in the vid I just posted. I sort of turn on a lamp and then the, the, the text disappears. So yeah, does your text actually, you know, interact with your video, with your scene? Have you added subtitles? What I've been doing recently is sort of, you know, export all the audio from DaVinci once I've cut up the video and then ship it over to Premiere Pro. Um, and then just use the auto captions generator and I'm trying to keep you know a consistent sort of captions um, Caption style, you know just across all my videos um, Next is the font creative and interesting Have you also used a standard font the boring font or have you you know experimented with it? Have you added blur? Have you added grain? Have you added you know glow? Have you added a drop shadow? Have you stretched it? So yeah, I have a bunch of fonts that I use. I'll put them on screen right now um, These are just sort of my standard fonts that I like going to um, some fonts are a lot better, you know, when you have long sentences and some fonts look really, really bad if you have long sentences. Some fonts look really, really good, you know, in short titles and otherwise some other fonts look really, really bad in short titles. So I have a bunch of fonts that I try and use that, you know, are kind of like a mix and match of, you know, of the, of the different styles. How's the pacing? Is there space to breathe in between? So I try to do this especially with the Atomic Habits video. Is there space for people to actually just sit there and just look? Is there space for people to breathe? It's very, very important for pacing. Otherwise, sometimes things feel a bit too rushed and a bit less thought out. Have you just added the cherry on top to just show people that you're really putting in a lot of effort into your videos? Have you tried to be more imaginative? So I try and do this in my YouTube videos more than client videos. You can't really change a client video last minute, but YouTube videos, you can always change them last minute. Have you used 3D to be creative? Have you used experimental transitions? So yeah, these are a lot better for just like personal products. Um, then for the YouTube, the post-production. You know, there's a certain way of posting things online to one, make sure they get seen, and then two, to make sure they perform. So there's four big things with YouTube. The, the video, the thumbnail, the description, and then the tags. 
So with the thumbnail, have you made a thumbnail um, that has, you know, the video description, the video title, the video keywords in the actual file, in the actual metadata or the file? So when I go into Photoshop, I actually always make sure I export the file with the actual name of the video or to at least have like the keywords in it. I've been told it, it actually helps. Either way, it's just a good way to organize your files anyways. Um, also with the thumbnail, you know, make sure you upload them at the standard, the good standard from DaVinci. I just export a high quality still and then I bring that to Photoshop. I mess around with the contrast a bit, add a bit of saturation and I make sure it doesn't exceed the two point, I think it's 2.3 megabytes. Um, that's the sort of limit for thumbnail. So yeah, I make sure it just doesn't exceed that and I upload it as a PNG, I think. I think the size is 1280 by 720. I think that's thumbnail size, but I'm not sure. Video, have you, make sure your video also has the keywords and your video title in it, like in the actual file. I think it, that helps with the, that helps with the algorithm as well. And then with the description, make sure you know, you actually talk about your video. So yeah, guys, if you look in my descriptions, you will literally see me just yapping. I'm um, just trying to get these little keywords off because I know that it matches, you know, if I put the keywords in the right places um, and actually describe the video kind of well even sometimes you know I do ramble I know if it's all cohesive and you know the description matches with the keywords matches with the tags matches with the thumbnails um, I'm sort of just giving myself the best way forward to sort of push a video out to YouTube and I think YouTube appreciates that you know YouTube is a great platform and they want to help everyone so I think you know giving them the most information they can can really help you and it helps them as well. So everyone actually benefits from it. I just mess with YouTube like, just as like a software a lot. YouTube is the only place that actually rewards hard work. So yeah, that was um, basically how to post high quality videos. I um, appreciate all you guys. See you in the next one.